see here. Let's see if we can get this all situated. I'm gonna let this run for a second and let some people get in here. Hmm. Where'd this go? Trying to stabilize my camera a little bit. How's it going, everybody? Uh, hopefully, y'all can hear me pretty good. Got to kind of experiment with the light here and see what looks the best. That look better. Yukon, Canada, Patagonia, Chile, Calgary, Alberta. Man, we got people from all over the place. How's it going, everybody? Gonna give it just another second to let this let some people get in here and then I'll get started. Making sure everything is going to be lined up correctly. Stick this guy right here. Alright, I'll hang tight. go. Alrighty. Guess we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. So like the picture I shared, going to be tying up some of these disc head sliders. You'll see how it gets that name shortly. Um, essentially you just stack a bunch of foam discs at the head. It uh, gives you a little bit different action than like a traditional slider head or a uh, traditional, you know, just like a regular solid foam head. It uh, creates a little bit more of a kind of a violent wake. The wake will be kind of etched across the surface a little bit more than usual. They uh, they will dive, but not quite as much as let's say a uh, like a double barrel head turned around backwards when you strip it. They try to plunge really hard on you. Definitely doesn't dive as hard as a uh, like a Radies diver head or like a Dahlberg diver, but um, just a little bit different of a uh, approach to the surface flies these just they really scoot across the surface great i fished them uh, a couple years back for small mouth large mouth and really liked them and kind of had a not really a falling out with them i just hadn't fished them in a while and uh thought about them and said well i'm gonna tie up a few more of these and try them on uh snake heads and probably get back to large mouth and i'll probably even tie some in some saltwater colors for reds this year as well but um really easy fly to vary you can you know, change your tailing material, don't have to put, necessarily have to put the legs on the side. Um, you can t tie a weed guard like I do with most of mine. Um, and then, of course, your all your color options. You, you can get craft foam in every color imaginable. And uh, this first one, I'm actually going to be using the Loco Foam, which is the shimmery stuff. Pretty cool. So, go ahead and get started at least. Um... The reason this one's called a disc head slider is you punch discs out of this loco foam and or out of any foam, whatever you want. Um, the size I'm going to be doing in this video is a 7 8 punch that uh, my dad made for me out of a piece of pipe. You can use uh, hollow leather punches or anything like that. Anything that will make a hollow punch and take out a, you know, a solid circle like that will work. And then this one is a three quarters. So when you tie these, you want your cylinders on top to be just a little bit larger than the ones on the bottom. That'll help it with keeling and it'll also prevent it from rolling over when you're fishing it. As you can see, those top discs are a little bit wider. It just kind of acts as a keel and almost like a, uh, I don't even know the word I'm trying to, almost like a, uh, what's the word? I can't think of the word I'm trying to say, 
but basically it, it almost acts like fins and prevents the fly from rolling over on its side. So let me check these comments, make sure I'm still up to date here. There we go. Sorry guys, I missed like 10 comments. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. Okay, there we go. So you gotta punch these little circles out, but it doesn't really take a whole lot of time if you have one of these punches that'll do it right. You just this is kind of hard to show on camera, but punch this guy just one second. I was trying to do this before the video, but got a little behind. The nice thing about these hollow punches is you don't have to pick your punch up in between each cut. You can just let them stack up inside the punch. Occasionally you'll get one that goes a little dull on you. But um, the way I like to tie these is uh at least the way that I think they look the best is uh four discs on top and four on the bottom. So just punched out the four for the top. So the top is gonna be this metallic green. It is it is black on the back, but that's really not gonna show up as you'll see. Now let me punch these four out for the bottom real quick. Like I said, this is a uh, seven eighths of an inch punch for the top and a three quarters for the bottom. This, uh, this loco foam, the it can be a little trickier to cut than regular craft foam because the glossy coat on it is kind of sticky. So it it kind of binds up in your punch a little bit. But uh, once you kind of get a little groove cut in there, you can almost just kind of peel it out of place and, or peel it out of the foam and you're in good shape. There we go. That was a good cut. Okay. Always got to have something to punch them out. Good to go. So, got our four yellow ones and four greens. And all I'm doing, it's like I said, it's kind of hard. I don't want to do it on my granite vice base because it'll probably best the granite up. But all this is is a little sharp, sharpened piece of copper pipe. And you're just pressing it. How to make this look? Yeah, pressing it into the foam. And twisting and as you press and twist that little sharp edge will cut it and you get those nice little circles cut out now it's just prepping for when we get to the foam at the end of the fly that's really the last step or just about the last step so I'm gonna start in the vise these are the uh, saltwater jaws by the way just hold a little bit bigger hook better this is a uh, 2 aught Gamagatsu B10S and this is a uh, 140 denier, uh, I think it's UTC. So, I'm going to go ahead and take our weed guard. It's always going to be your first step if you're going to attach a weed guard the way I like to attach them. So, cut you about a, I don't know, 4 inch piece and start it. You can start it on top of the hook or on the side, doesn't really matter. If you start it on the side, let's say we'll start it closer or the side closest to the camera, when you attach it to the eye, you're going to want to attach it to the side closest to you. That way it crosses in front of the hook and works correctly as a weed guard if you really want to get picky with it like that. But in my experience, most of the time, as long as this piece of mono crosses somewhat in front of the, uh, in front of the hook point, you'll be all right. So, see how we're looking here. Nice thing about these saltwater jaws, you can tuck the mono down behind. And pretty much perfect length. All right. If you don't want the mono to get in your way, little 10 cent hair clip will hold it out of, out of the way. Let's see. 
Reno, Nevada, Vermont, sn snowing Eastern Oregon. How's it going, everybody? All right. So, the style that I'll be tying tonight will have the uh, the skirt material for the legs. Uh, this first one's going to just have round rubber for the back. Um, one thing I like to do is I like to put a little ball of chenille right here to help flare that skirt out a little bit. It uh, doesn't really affect the casting or anything like that. It just, with that fly sits still on the surface, it's going to spread the legs out a little bit more. So, I'm going to go ahead and capture this. Just This is just regular, regular old chenille, the same stuff you'd use for the body on a woolly bugger or any other fly. Go ahead and capture that and uh, jump my thread out the way. Really like to use the vise to control my wraps because I'm just trying to build up a nice ball. And if you really want to lock it into place, open up a new thing of super glue. You can put just a little dot of Loctite right in there. And the uh, when that chenille hits that Loctite, you might as well have welded it to the hook because it's it's not going anywhere. Get one more wrap, like so. And uh, I've had people ask me why I use red in the past. I I don't know. Pretty much for all of my flaring material like this, at least on a top order fly, I like red just because. I feel like, you know, fish, especially predator fish, they definitely can see red when it's on the surface like that. It imitates anything. Yeah, you know, they may not see it as red like we do because a lot of people say the uh the color disappears in the water, but um they still see that color. Whatever they see it as is, you know, that's remains to be seen or remains to be seen, but they just notice that color and I, I just like to use it as like a hot spot or a target spot for them. And also, you know, who knows if they see it correctly, they might think it's blood or something like that. Just like I said, this is a this is a top order fly, so even if they think it's something like gills, that wouldn't be a bad thing. So here we go. I'm gonna pull off uh, three strands of round rubber. This is just medium. And this is in kind of just a not not really a chartreuse, more like a lime green. This is a. Uh, Real popular, older um, top water fly color. Uh, if you look up the old loco frog pattern, it's a very, very popular fly. Uh, I think the first time I ever saw it was in an article about a uh, smallmouth fishing on the John Day River in, I guess it's Oregon. I think it's in Oregon. Um, and yeah, it was just like a kind of like a gurgler variation tied with this loco foam. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, that kind of, uh, what's the color? Like a lime green over yellow. It's basically the same color as a frog in nature, but just kind of turned up to 11. Extremely exaggerated. So, go line these two up. Doesn't really matter if they're the same length right now. I'm going to fold them around our, around our uh, thread. Bring them up. And we're just going to lash them down. Let's see here. I'm going to try to space them out evenly. Get it lashed down good. Now you'll see where that, uh, where that chenille comes into play. That chenille is going to do a great job of flaring that rubber skirt material out. If I could just get this one yellow one to go where I want it. It's one thing, rubber legs are not as easy to work with as silly legs. Your, you know, your rectangular silicone legs are always easier to work with than these round rubber. The round rubber just kind of wants to go wherever it pleases. I'm just not going to like the way this looks unless I retie it. They tried to roll on me. I was trying to fix it without having to retie them, but I know better. 
just go ahead and do it right the first time. So we'll capture them in the middle there. And then fold it over. With this round rubber, a lot of times you want to kind of grab a little bit more material when you tie it in in the center. Just because when you fold them over, there's a lot more meat to the material than with the silly legs. You really got to kind of smash them down. So, there we go. Got those legs tied in solid. One nice thing about the round rubber, once you get it tied in properly, they are not going anywhere. The stuff has, you know, it's a real, real dense material, so when you bite into it, the stuff just gets all warped around the thread. They're not going anywhere. If you want to, you can kind of space them around so you get a nice flare on the back, but that's that. Now for a collar, I'm going to just use uh, two hen saddles, same feathers you would use for a feather game changer or anything like that, just short little and saddles. Try to find two halfway decent ones. There we go. Gonna tie these in uh, soft tackle style, just uh, by the tips. And with these flies, I don't worry about making your tie-in points pretty. All that stuff's going to get covered up by those foam discs. So I'm not afraid to tie in a half inch of feather and just wrap it all up with thread. Stroke all your uh, material back. Or all of your uh, fibers of your feathers back. And cover up that uh, tie-in of the round rubber. And it's alright if you work into the marabou a little bit on these feathers. It's, in fact, it probably will look a little better, fill out a little nicer. There we go. Got that all tied in. Capture that. Now. Last step before I get into attaching the discs. Maybe get some scissors that are sharp enough to cut feather stems. Get all that tie-in cleaned up nice. You know, the, the marabou, it looks pretty substantial, looks pretty big right now, but it's it's not that big. It You know, as soon as it gets wet, it'll lay down nice and be good to go. Let me keep up with these comments real quick. Facebook does all this weird stuff with these comments where it stacks them and like you scroll, you feel like you're never going to get to the bottom, but it just keeps repeating the comments. <laughs> it's kind of weird. All right, where to put my flash? There it is. Um, just for a little bit of flash added to this, I'm going to use this uh, gold and olive ripple ice fiber. Just take a couple little pinches of this stuff. It goes a long way. And I'm honestly, I'm just going to tie this in almost like you were doing a dub head. You're going to put it over the hook shank and fold it all back, almost like you're uh, hollow tying it. But need to build up a little bit of bulk with the material, so I'm going to fold it in half. And this is purely just for a little bit of flash to add to the fly. So I'll fold it in half, cut those ends, and then get over here and just kind of even your ends up a little bit. It's okay if you got a few that are a little longer, but you don't want those ones that are two and three times as long, just all sticking out. So what I like to do is kind of lay it on the hook shank and just kind of roll it around. Loose thread wrap, loose thread wrap, and then bind it down. And that way, if you look, you get kind of a nice, even distribution all the way around. And when you go to fold this material back, you can look and say, okay, I'm a little bit light where the hook point is. I'm a little bit light right there. So you can kind of guide that material where you want it and cover all those areas up. So you got a nice even distribution of flash all the way around the collar. 
get that tied in nice. And at this point, if you see any that are real long, just go in there and snip them out now. It'll just be easier. Like so, alrighty. Now we got the oh, one. we got the collar and everything tied up. So all that's left now is to attach these discs. This part can be a little tricky, um, at least for your first one, but uh, hopefully a couple of these tips I show you will help you out. So, you want to lay them flat and then kind of, you take your foam disc, I'll do it this way before I wrap one on just to show you. You're going to lay it flat across the hook shank and really you're going to jump your thread up like so until you capture just the tiniest little piece of foam. It doesn't take much, just a little tiny piece of one of these circles. And basically, it'll grab it and it'll try to flare up on you. Let's see if I can get this one to grab correctly. Yeah, you, know, you wanna center your foam, and there we go. Just the tiniest little piece. You honestly kinda bend the foam around the hook. And don't go crazy with your thread, you don't need to cinch them down super tight because after we get each one tied in top and bottom you're gonna glue each following disc or each disc that's in front of it to the previous disc so always check and make sure you got it good and centered on the top and as you can see just the tiniest little pinch of foam is all I captured. And looking good. Okay, now I'll flip to the bottom. So like I said, this one's going to be green over yellow. That kind of classic loco frog color. Same thing on the bottom. Lay it flat. And just kind of capture it. I got myself all out of order. You actually got to do the bottom one first. <laughs> this is what happens when you tie live. You get to see all the fun stuff. So, take that top one off. Now attach this one on the bottom first. Same thing. Just capture that tiniest little piece of foam. Like so. And you'll see why you got to do the top one second. Because when we get to the front, there's a little tag of foam hanging off there. When we get to the front, the top one, you want that to be the one that meets the eye of the hook. So, got that in place. Now, let's attach that top one. Like so. Real easy now that I've already creased the foam one time. And just capture that tiniest little piece. And jump our thread up just a touch. If you wanted to, you can put a little dot of glue under here and kind of press it down into the collar to hold it in place. I don't typically do that on my uh, on mine. I like to leave the back kind of flared a little bit. But we'll go back to the bottom. Same thing. Now you're going to want to pay attention to your spacing because... You kind of want the gaps in your foam to be equal all the way up the fly. It'll make it look a little better and it will uh, have more of a consistent swimming action. If it's like that, you won't get any kind of erratic jerks or, you know, the fly won't fall off to one side or anything like that. Okay, now go back to the top. Sometimes this foam can be a little tricky. I mean, you're trying to capture a round piece of foam with thread and wrap it around a round hook. So it, it can be a little tricky, but more or less you just kind of keep wrapping until you feel that thread actually bite into it. So now that we got it grabbed, we're going to just take a little of this Loctite and... Nothing crazy, this stuff goes a long way. Just put a little bit on the underside of the of the foam 
you can see there and we're going to press it and if anyone's ever worked with Loctite and foam you know when that stuff touches it is game time so make sure when you're putting it there you know where it's going and you're prepared because you're gonna have to re redo all of the discs if if you want to take it off a little dot there and glue this one and this is kind of where this flies durability comes from yeah it's exposed foam and I, I do plan to fish these for fish with teeth but by the time you're done the body of this fly is kind of turned into one solid chunk of foam and it's all anchored they're all anchored together they end up they end up being pretty durable. Okay. Go back to the bottom. Tie in a yellow. Spacing looks pretty good there. Might actually go forward just a bit. This is just me being picky more than anything. There we go. Okay. And you could glue each one as you tie it in, but um, I find it to be easier just to tie in each step, top, bottom, or bottom, top, and then, then come back with the glue. Seems to make it a little easier on me. There we go. The top one tied in. Alrighty, now same thing we just did, a little bit of glue, and press. Go to the bottom, same thing, a little bit of glue, and uh, a lot of people use Loctite fly tying. I, I highly recommend it. Uh, the Loctite is definitely, especially that gel control, that's by far my favorite super glue to use for like foam work like this. But I will say, uh, pay the extra dollar fifty and get the black bottle. Don't get the silver. The uh, I think I actually have one in here. Yeah, I had no choice the other day, but this bottle. The, the material itself is almost identical, but um, this one is not as water resistant and it's not as impact resistant as this stuff. I use this to attach eyes a lot. Um, it works for the most part, but once in a while you'll bang a fly into a rock and an eye will pop off or something. And with this stuff, it doesn't happen as much. It's It actually dries a little bit more flexible, so it has that impact resistance but it also supposedly they say it's more water resistant too so that's that's always good okay just kind of tweaking the body a little bit making sure it's nice and even so you can see yellow on the bottom green on top okay now this is optional since this one I'm tying is more meant to imitate a frog I am going to do this because I like the way it looks, but by no means is this required for the fly. I'm going to take two green legs and one yellow leg and tie them in on each side. And we're going to kind of just make some pseudo frog legs kicking out on each side here. I can get these rubber legs lined up. <laughs> so, time in like that green, yellow, green. And I'm not actually going to fold these around the hook because it would make a pretty big bump of material right here. And I'm trying to avoid that as we're getting a little closer to the eye. These, uh, you can snip them a little bit. I usually snip them pretty short. Just because you don't want them to 
foul with your hook. Tie. Not liking the way that green leg is looking. That leg was all bent up. Looked like it had been in the package wrong. Peel these guys off again. Nova Scotia, upstate South Carolina. Let's see if I missed any comments. Yep, looks the same. If y'all have any questions for me, go ahead and put them in there. If I don't see them right when you comment, I'll I'll get to them after the fly for sure. All right. Let's line these rubber legs up. And uh, when you're when you're using legs like this, definitely don't forget, you know, each material has its own properties. Your rubber legs, like your round rubber like this, rubber actually sinks. So when it's sitting on the water, it's actually not going to be laid flat across the surface. They're going to sink just a little bit little bit below the surface just can be a nice kind of different action or a different presentation let's see you trim those just a tiny bit shorter there we go all righty clean up these tie-in points real quick and we are on the home stretch. Come on. Okay. Now, we'll tie in, whoops, go to the bottom. Go we'll tie in a yellow. And if you tied those legs in correctly and they're, you know, right on the sides of the hook, they really shouldn't be in your way for tying in this foam. You should be able to tie the foam in right in front of them, and the legs should kind of just fall right in between two of those discs, and you'll kind of lock them into place when you glue that disc down. Now for the green one. Come on. Didn't bite it very good right there. Let's see. Not wanting to bite right there. I gotta kind of thin my tie in point out a little bit. What I'm gonna do, since this one's trying to run around on me, I'll go ahead and glue this one down just to anchor it. Like so. You can kind of hear it as I'm messing with it. That that coating on that loco foam is a little sticky. It can make make it a little tricky to work with sometimes, but usually it's it's no problem. You get used to working with it. All right, now for that green one. Where's the spot already kind of pinched? There it is. There we go. Bit pretty good right there. Alrighty. Got that tied in nice. Now we'll pull it up. Same as we've been doing. Glue it into place. You know, you, they are anchored by your tie-in point for sure. But the glue is what really holds these together like I said when you're done kind of makes the whole fly one solid piece really adds to your durability if you notice when you're gluing and one of the sides doesn't really get glued down like this one shoot that's a nice thing about that Loctite it's got that real real fine tip on it you can shoot just a little bit up under there 
if it tries to shoot out on you, just take your needle, clean it up, like so. And as you can see, you got your legs. You can kind of force them into position. You know, if you want to be more forward, you can pull them forward. It's just the way those uh, discs kind of bite into them. What I am going to do, I'm going to shoot a little bit of glue right there and just kind of seal this nose up. That way it forces the legs back. I want these more forced back at like a you know, like a 45 degree angle or so. That way it will glide across the surface a little better. Okay. Essentially, the tying portion of the fly for the most part is done. All we got left is just attach our weed guard. If we go ahead and pull that out. The way I like to attach a weed guard is I will capture it on the side of the hook. Like so, capture it good and tight, and then take a lighter, push it up, let me see where, cut this piece of weed guard just a little short, but I'll be able to make it work. Let's see here. Pull it up just a tiny bit, here's what I can do, loosen that tension on it, like so. So yeah, the way I like to do it, it's a really old way. I, I, I had a guy guy show me this when I was working at the uh, fly shop at Bass Pro. Showed me this a long time ago. Um, take your lighter, singe the top of the mono, and then flatten it. And it makes a nice little, almost like a nail head. You throw a couple wraps to wedge it in place. And then while you still got some tension, you take the same super glue I've been using, put a little bit of super glue on the mono right below the nail head, and then seat the nail head into the thread. And that is not going anywhere. You can cover all that up nice and pretty. I, I don't usually worry about it. If, if that little piece of mono is showing, it is what it is. But um, for the most part, that bubble of Loctite that kind of shoots up when you attach your, uh, your weed guard like that, that will act as head cement. You don't even need to hit it with any head cement or anything. I can actually see there's, tiny, there's a tiny bit still left right there. I'll just kind of smear that around. And that is a bulletproof weed guard. Um, Mike Hawkins, uh, missed the disc sizes. Okay, so the ones I'm using, this is a 7 8 for the top size, and a 3 quarters for the bottom size. Um, you can get, uh, leather punches, that's what a lot of people use for these. Um, I think Rainey's might still make these disc punches. It's been a while, um, since this fly came out, so maybe... I don't know, they may not be making them anymore. But, um, yeah, the way you want to do it is your top top disc is just slightly larger than the bottom disc. That way it helps it to keel properly. And, yeah, just makes it makes the fly fish a little better. Um, now, purely because I think it looks good, we are going to put some eyes on here. I found these. These are just 6 millimeter Flymen living eyes in the earth color. I just happen to have two left, so I said, why not? We'll put them on here. This is a fly that really you're not going to benefit from eyes or anything like that, but they look cool, so why not? And I'm just looking for a reason to use them up. Smash that guy down. And we'll do this one as well. Whoops. Don't go all over the place.
There we go. Looks a little dopey, but it works. Now, last thing is just separate all these strands of rubber. Um, one nice thing about round rubber is you can pull them off in the strands and leave them kind of thick so they don't go all over the place when you're tying. That makes it a little easier to handle when you're using them like this as like a skirt material. And there should be one more. Yep, one more needs to separate. Like so. Now, you can get in here and just check your skirt material out. You don't want it all to be the same length, but you don't want anything crazy significantly longer than the rest. So, in terms of the Loco Frog color, there we go. Nice, somewhat bright eye-catching color a little bit of flash in the uh, collar there and yeah just a classic frog color and a pretty classic top order fly this is the uh this is the disc slider but it's a blaine chocolate pattern um i don't i couldn't even tell you when he came out with this one i know it's in his book and it was in a fly tire magazine a long time ago when i was managing the fly shop back at Bass Pro, so it's probably been a good while. So, there we go. Let's see, what are we working with here? I'll, uh, let's see. Let's do another one. I'll tie one in my favorite color. I didn't know how long this first one was going to take, and I was going to judge by the time. We got time. Just trying to pretty this guy up a little bit. Try even these yellow legs out. We got some that are about half an inch longer than the rest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Looking good. Okay. Okay. That guy's done. Now, let's do my favorite color. Same hook. Whoops, let's try not to throw them all over the place. Two-aught Gamagatsu B10S. We will change thread color for this one. While I normally don't care too much about thread color, um... When the fly is going to be black and purple, I don't think you need yellow thread sticking out on the nose. Switch to my black here. Wish you could see, like, my, you know, I got my toolbar over here and everything, but if you, if I was zoomed out far enough for you to see my toolbar, you wouldn't be able to tell what I'm doing. So we'll stick with it like this. And yeah, Bill, it's, uh, it's going to be a good one for snakeheads. It's going to be a good one. There we go, get her thread started. This is a black, probably, probably 210, if I had to guess. I don't know. I don't pay a whole lot of attention to my thread uh, thickness for this fly. As long as it's 140 or heavier, you'll be fine, because you're really not, like, cinching down on the thread really bad. Go ahead and feed this through here. Um, don't make this mistake. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... A couple times I've done it where I feed my weed guard down through here, but it's behind the screw that holds the jaw together. So that's a whole lot of fun when you try to take the fly out the vise and it's attached to the vise still. you got to unscrew that screw. So if you keep it real tight to the hook, it goes in between that screw and the hook and you'll be able to still get the fly out the vise. Just a little blooper that I've had happen to be a handful of times. So, a trick with attaching this mono, I like to loosely spiral wrap down and then loosely spiral wrap back up, kind of crossing the wraps. And it kind of makes like that Chinese finger trap effect. So when you try to pull on it, it actually gets tighter. Like the uh, thread actually kind of grips it even tighter. So if you do that, you don't have to waste time gluing the mono down. 
We'll run our thread back up here. Where's my hair clip? Hair clip. Attach that guy. Let's see. Glad you learned glad you learned some stuff, Jock. Uh disc sizes already answered that one. Yeah, okay. Let's see here. So gotta do the uh spreader on this one. You're gonna do red again. It's pretty much I mean you if you look on this one, you can't even see the spreader. It's it's tucked up in there pretty good. You can just barely see it if I shine the shine the light on it. But um still, I mean it if you want to match it to the color of the fly you can, but I just usually grab whatever I've got handy and I have a ton of this red chenille. So go back, capture a decent chunk of that chenille, wrap it down, get it good and locked in, bring your thread up, get it out of the way. Then use the vise to control your wraps nice and tight. I mean I am I'm putting a lot of pressure on this chenille right now, if just in case you're wondering. Makes it a little more durable. Like I said, if you really want to make it bomb proof, put you a dot of Loctite on one of your wraps, and it is bulletproof. The way that Loctite grips fabric and chenille and foam like that, you you're gonna be hard pressed to ever get it ever get it off the hook. You'd have to get a razor blade out to get it off. There you go. Don't need that anymore. Then just go ahead and tie all that down. So you got a nice kind of welded into place ball of chenille there. For the legs on this one, I am going to use, just because I'm doing black and purple, I don't have any purple round rubber, so I'm going to use uh, Silly Legs. I got some black. This is actually, uh, if you want a little hack, if you can't find the jig skirt or the, the uh, Silly Leg material you want, these are just uh, bass jig skirts. They come with a little band on them. A lot of people say, oh, it kinks the, the, the silicone. It, it really doesn't. Just get in there with a super fine, uh, super fine tip scissors cut the band and then stretch the silicone and all that memory is gone immediately and you've got a ton of black silly legs for like these are way cheaper than buying silly legs a lot of times these are like $2.99 a pack and there's usually six skirts in there that are pretty loaded that's you know if you can't find the colors you're looking for and then I got some purple silly legs these are Hairline crazy legs. There's so many different types of silly legs out there now, I can't even keep up with it. So, take about, I don't know, three of these because we're going to double them up. Let's get one more. Thought I had three, only had two. There we go. Okay, so we're going to take these three purple ones, and then we'll take three black ones, kind of marry them together there a little bit, and then fold them around our thread. And then just tie them in and kind of spread them around the uh, the chenille ball like so. And then just get those good and tied in. And we will hold all of that back with the hair clip. Oops. There we go. All right. For the collar on this one, uh, got some black hen saddle. Gonna, 
use a couple of these just two of the kind of medium sized ones these are actually a little bit higher quality than those yellow ones I used earlier so they're a little bit longer feathers righty same thing we're going to tie them in soft tackle style just by the tips Just grab as much of that feather as you want. You know, the the fish that I throw these for, they're gonna hit it like a hit it like a bomb. So just a little extra durability on the fly is never a uh, never a bad thing. Just gonna wrap. Just go ahead and stroke the uh, fibers of the feather back as you wrap, creating that collar just to kind of cover all that tie-in point on the back of the hook up. There we go. Drop my thread back here, capture. We go, couple tight wraps, lock that in. Stroke everything back and a good trick with hen saddles and any feathers like this that you wrap, if you wrap them a little bit forward of where you plan for them to be and then just wrap back over them a little bit, it'll really, really lock them into place and protect those stems from getting beat up too bad. So, got that collar tied in. Now for our little kind of ball of flash around the collar we're gonna do some purple ripple ice this is actually this is electric purple it's a little bit darker um, ripple ice does come in two different colors of purple the uh, the one that's just called purple is um more of like a violet color and I'm looking for the darker purple if you're ever doing black and purple flies you want that darker purple you don't want the light stuff so I'm gonna go ahead fold these over just get a little more bulk clip them and then we'll even the longest tips up to a nice kind of somewhat uniform clump there anybody super long you'll go ahead and cut them off Okay, just like we did on the previous one, take your clump, kind of lay it over the hook shank, and let it kind of wrap around, do a loose thread wrap, loose thread wrap, and then tighten it down. What that'll do is it'll help that flash kind of surround the hook, and I see I'm a little light on the bottom here, so I'm kind of working some material around. It looks like I'm light on top and light on bottom just a little bit. So you really get that stuff tied in. And then when I fold it back, I'll make sure to focus the material where I need it to cover up those bald spots. Like so. And then get a nice even spread like that. There we go. Let's jump our thread back just a touch. Where you typically want to start these discs is your tie-in point should be just ahead of your hook bend on a B10S. Let me go down and see if I missed any comments. Oh, should be good. Okay. Gonna do something a little different with this one. I punched the uh, punched the circles out already. Um, this is just regular flat black craft foam. Then I've got some purple, you know, a uh, glossy purple loco foam. I'm actually going to stripe this one. So we're going to do black on top, purple on bottom, then purple on top, black on bottom. So, got a 7 8 black for the top. But um, to start, we're going to do a 3 quarter purple on the bottom. Here, capture that little piece there. Just 
Just make sure it's nice and centered. Okay. Then we'll take the 7 8 inch black. That one tied on top. Go underneath. So since we did a purple, we're going to do, do a black now. And this is a three quarters. When you're punching these uh, circles out, it's nice to, you can kind of just picture the fly as you're doing it. So the way I do it so I don't get mixed up, I go punch a, you know, a uh, punch a 7 8 inch black and then flip the fly over punch the smaller purple and even when you're prepping your stuff it'll make it'll prevent you from messing up and having the wrong number of each or anything like that so now we're going to take a 7 8 purple put that on top so That nice and centered looks good. Let's do a little little glue there to attach that guy. <laughs> Blueberry feathers. <laughs> yeah. I uh hold on one second, Elaine. Got a whole pile of them right here. <laughs> that's uh, that's my aunt. Everybody, she's got a uh, she's got a few peacocks that like to drop those feathers, and they've been used in quite a few flies now. So we're gonna go to the bottom and glue that bottom disc down like so there we go looking good so far back to the bottom whoops that's a big one let's not do that there's the small guy You'll find when you do these discs, uh, I like the look of the loco foam. It's it can be a little pricier than the uh, the regular foam, but it is a great material. It's got a lot of flash to it, and um, the one thing about the loco foam is it's a little easier to tie in. That kind of sticky coating, your thread kind of bites into it a little better, and uh, yeah, it just. It just, they just tie in a lot easier. Your thread doesn't slip off of them so bad. Glued my finger to that top disc. Luckily, that's all going to be covered up. How's it going, Sean? Okay. I'm going to do a black one on top now. Whoops. Didn't quite get my spacing how I wanted it there. Remember I said you want to kind of keep your spacing nice and equal. It uh, it will make a difference in the finished fly, especially how it fishes. So keep that spacing nice and pretty. Like so. Let's go ahead and glue this guy down. Okay. Now we got three tied in. So we're gonna do gonna attach some legs here. Let's see. 
I'm going to try to do two of each color on each side. These silly legs are a lot smaller around than those rubber legs like I used on the previous one. So they're a little easier to control. You just attach them on the side of the hook like so. And then trim them to length. Say about right in. Oops. Right in there looks pretty good. Since I have foam pads that have sticky pads on them, would you still have to use the glue? I would recommend still using the super glue because chances are that glue that comes on those foam pads is not waterproof. Um, I have some foam that has like an adhesive back to it. Um, I've got some that comes in like black with gold glitter and stuff on it. I found out real quick that, uh, that adhesive backed foam, that stuff is not waterproof. It, it usually after about 10 minutes, it's all falling apart. But you can easily glue right over that adhesive that is on the back of the foam and it'll be fine. Go. Let's cut these. Alrighty. Got our legs done. At least our forward legs. Now we'll attach this black small one on the bottom. Sometimes when you do these legs, you gotta kind of hold them out of the hold them out of the way as you're tying everything in. But one trick is make sure you got your thread in the spot that you want to tie the. Uh, the um, disc in it'll make it a little easier to grab and it's like we did before I think this one's gonna be a little bit of a pain just because the tie-in points kind of fat so I will go ahead and tie and glue this underside down make sure you got your silly legs kind of where you want them because this is the one that will kind of uh, force them into place. Go and I can see this side of the disc didn't get enough foam on it. I mean enough glue on it. It's just a little dot in there. And glue that guy down. Typically this Loctite, if you hold it in place for about five to seven seconds, it'll it will move mountains. That stuff is no joke. Go and get that side sealed up. Like I said, the way you tie these foam discs in, yeah, I mean, the, the tie-in point is holding them to an extent, but really that glue is what's anchoring everything together. I mean, you're, you're basically welding all these foam pads together, and they're becoming one solid body. So, once you glue all the foam down together, it's pretty... Pretty much all that's really matters is that Loctite has got all that foam stuck together as one solid piece. So, capture that. Like so. And go ahead and glue this one down. And I'm I'm doing a very, very light and thin coat of this uh, Loctite on the foam. Definitely don't need a big glob of it on there. It, it, it goes a long way. And you can really give it a pretty good smash when you get it into place. 
it'll just help everything hold up a little better in the long run. Yeah, I see a couple of these, these legs ended up being just a touch longer than I like, so I'll trim them out. Okay. Make sure it's nice and straight. Appears to be. Okay. So now, we're going to take our weed guard, pull it up front. Same thing we did last time. I'll explain it a little better this time because I got a long enough piece of weed guard. So we're going to catch it, kind of smash it into place. And then what I like to do is pull it up and that's about where I like it. Maybe have about a quarter of an inch gap between the, uh, the hook point and the bottom of the loop. That way you've got a nice amount of, you got a nice amount of pressure there that'll deflect, um, grass and wood or whatever you're throwing it around but it's also still floppy enough to where when a fish bites it it'll compress out of the way so i like it right there so what i do a lot of times i'll take my scissors and just kind of bite into them just a little bit and use that to mark the point and then cut it and then just like i did before take your lighter Melt it down and flatten it out. Let that cool for just a second. We'll see. When you pull it back down, it's exactly where you want it. So all you got to do is just put a little bit of Loctite on the weed guard underneath of that little nail head. When you pull it back into place, Gives you a nice little bubble of Loctite on top of the thread, and a little bit of it gets forced down in there where the weed guard is. And if you do it right, you can whip finish right onto that Loctite, and you don't need head cement. If you're trying to tie these things quick, saving yourself a couple steps like that goes a long way. So, or if you're a production tire or anything like that. So, cool little slider body. Now, where do I put those eyes? Yeah. Found these eyes when I was digging through my stash. These look pretty cool. These are spawn, uh, Fly fishing. Staples holding the pack of eyes in there. These are spawn uh, six millimeter eyes in, let's see if it'll focus, in raven color. They're uh, really, really cool. They're like solid black with a little bit of green and even some gold in there. They'll look real good against that, that purple head. So. a couple of these guys out we will put a dot just a small little dot of Loctite on there because when you smash this thing down that dot is going to move a lot or it's going to spread out a lot Typically a little dot about the size of a pin head is all you need to attach these eyes. And usually if you do a dot about that size, when you press that eye down, you'll see a little bit of it will actually kind of bubble up out past the sides. There we go. And... Stick this guy in there. And good to go.
and that's it said they're a pretty cool fly um you know you got to get those punches or something to make those holes out of the uh out of the foam you know that that definitely helps um i definitely would not want to trace like around a nickel or something like that and try and cut them but um all i've got here like i said my dad made these for me they're just uh two little pieces of metal pipe sharpened to a pretty you know pretty solid edge and you know this craft foam's easy to cut you press it down twist it a little bit and you're you're good punches right through it i've actually got a uh cutting board on my uh on my fly tying desk it's a one of those like floppy kind of packable cutting boards i use it for making brushes and i you know so when i'm running a wire bristle brush i'm not tearing my desk up but uh it's doing double duty acting as a back backstop for that punch so i'm not cutting into the wood of my desk but um yeah so i mean those punches you can make them in all different sizes i mean you can make these as big or as small as you want uh you just gotta remember your top size is just slightly larger than the than the bottom like i've uh i've seen these down all the way as small as like a half inch on top and a uh was it a little like a quarter inch on the bottom and little tiny things and they they look great like look like they'd be a killer little brim bug but uh go ahead and pull this guy out the vise and we'll see what she looks like so yeah little black and purple disc head slider go ahead and cut these legs kind of even it out a little bit here those legs didn't separate that one and yeah pretty simple fly just you can really crank them out fast when you kind of get everything punched out and ready to go if you prep your fly beforehand you can really really tie these quickly and uh yeah options are endless you can change the colors up change your tailing material um i've seen them tied with a rat tail like just a piece of um piece of a zonker strip where they shaved all the hair off so you just got a piece of leather for a tail and then they tie them you know put ears on them and everything make it look just like a mouse um i've seen them with frog legs i've tied them with frog legs before they look they look great they swim great um double rabbit strip legs single rabbit strip tail you name it i mean if you wanted to make a real subtle slider you could just do a buck tail or a craft fur tail and it would work great it's all about what you want to imitate and what's your fish like like i said these will probably end up getting chewed to death by a snakehead so a lot of legs a little bit of flash something that looks like a frog that's all it takes so yeah anybody got any questions thanks vic uh thanks mike And yeah, if anybody's uh, anybody's got any questions after the live, you can always shoot me a message on here or uh, on Instagram. My uh, my Instagram is Grant Alvis underscore Fly Fanatic. Um, if you type in Grant Alvis underscore, it'll it'll pop up probably. But yeah, no problem, Bill. No problem, David. No problem, other David. <laughs> no problem, Jock. Thanks, Doug. Give it just another minute. Anybody's got any questions? Otherwise, I'm good to go. Let's see here. I'll show this one. This is the color that I had for the uh, the fly. I like to show the picture, or you know, to show before the live started. Um, it's one of my favorite colors. Kind of a cinnamon brown over a tan. I take a marker and dot it all up. It's actually a pretty natural frog color, that kind of light or dark brown with a kind of tan belly. But um, I kind of take it up a notch. I've got a lot of gold in the legs. You can see it's brown with gold stripes and then solid metallic gold legs. And then I do copper and gold flash in the collar. And then the same legs for the front. One of my One of my favorite colors. Large mouth, small mouth, snakeheads, 
Um, you name it, anything's going to bite this thing. Minus the gold, it's a real natural frog color. But All right, since you didn't have any questions, I will end it there. Like I said, if anybody's got any questions after the live or anybody that watches it later, um, just shoot me a message either on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, on Instagram, I'm Grant Alvis underscore uh, Fly Fanatic. <sighs> Jesus. No sofa. <laughs> no sofa for sale. God. All right. Y'all have a good night. Thanks.